say about your boy Silver Kiss. He for us on YouTube. Um, first and foremost, I want to um, say sorry last night for not doing the stream. I had some technical issues with my uh, with my whole stream setup. Um, first, my uh, camera was upside down, and then last night when I tried to do the stream without the camera, it started to be a glitchy, buggy mess. And when you used Elgato straight from the um, software um, streaming device, it it bugs out like crazy when it does stream right, and then it doesn't even flatten out. So, um, first and foremost, I'm sorry. But let's get into the real meat of everything. Um, first of all, let's talk about the Smash Direct, man. The Smash Direct is was crazy last night. It was a lot of good stuff. And it, the thing I want to discuss is on um, the characters revealed the most. But I'll go ahead and get the small stuff out the way, which was really small stuff. But last night, I felt a couple fans were slapped in the face with the me costumes last night. Because I know people wanted Tails. Knuckles, Egino, um, and those were the three things. We already knew about the, ch uh, the Chuckaboo um, hats um, coming when this cloud was revealed, but we didn't, and, um, you know, <laughs> didn't know about the other costumes. The Sonic the Hedgehog character really did, um, like, shook me a little bit. Sonic the Hedgehog, who could it be adding for Sonic the Hedgehog? And I think of like small things like Cream, t um, Cream and Amy, e or Big, or somebody else, but I didn't imagine. Nipples, the gelata or blails. <laughs> I'm sorry for that one, but alright. Um, Gino fans, truly, I'm sorry Gino didn't make it in Smash. But let's go ahead to the real meat. Let's talk about Corrin first and foremost, because Corrin, however, was a Fire Emblem character. People already are totally not with how overrepresented the Fire Emblem is in a series. And you know what, man? Like, look, I'll be honest with you. Fire Emblem Fates is the 25th anniversary game of Fire Emblem, and I'm not mad or nothing like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and just play Corrin because you know what, man? I like the Fire Emblem characters a lot, and I like to use them a lot. Uh, and you know what, man? I'm, uh, I'm down for a six character. Like Mario got like how many? Plus Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Wario, Diddy. That's like how many characters? There's along with Baby Bowser, Jim, Baby Bowser, Bowser, the Koopalings, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Rosalina. Then we have Pokemon who has Mewtwo, the Ninja, Charizard, Pikachu, Jigglypuff. How much more can we have handle of those rep over being represented? So, guess the Fire Emblem gets in a lot of love, man, because why not? <laughs> right, but I'm I'm totally down with um, Cherim. Corn, corn, being in Smash, I, I have no problem with him being there. And you know what? More characters than Mario. So why waste my time arguing about it? All right? Then they broke down Cloud. Right? So last night I had a chance to work with Cloud on both here and the Wii U. He handles great on both platforms, but some people say he's OP'd and. I'm starting to see his weaknesses. A lot of his moves have lag to it, and they can catch him off guard. Like if he don't recover quickly from his moves, he, he's easily open a lot of times. Then um, when he tries to do his charge, his limit break, his limit break, he's very open there. I don't know if I can guard into that, or guard while I'm charging it, so I can guard and then guard out. And some moves I can guard guard against, and then while he's doing it, I can come out the um, shield and him like he's very open a lot of times so I think that's what's break his OP status already he cloud is basically a glass cannon with himself especially his recovery his recovery not as bad as low max but at least it can get you up to where you need to especially when you have limit break so cloud is he's a fairly good character and with the buster sword moves fast not as fast like Sonic or Lucina fast, but fast blade. He moves the blade fast in neutral air a lot, and I say, dang, that is a good way with Cloud. Cloud is is mobile, mobile with that arm um, sword, in which I thought he was going to be an overpowered slow character, but he feels like a natural born character, and I can get through a lot of stuff with him. So I'm very happy with how Cloud turned out to be. So my next thing, my thesis is my last thing I want to talk about is 
how Bayonetta won the Smash belt. Okay. And I see how they did it, and it's basically like an election. Like, let's just say like, like Bayonetta must have ranked it top five or was on number one in Japan. And, yeah, but for Bayonetta to win it with one country being number one, that means Bayonetta had to be in second and third, or second, second, or somewhere third and second. And most, I would say that Japan was the divider here because Japan has a very different taste in characters than we do. Like, we was over here voting for Banjo Kazooie, Shovel Knight, Shantae. They might have been voting for people like Goku, um, Sora, um, Lo um, Lofi. <laughs> Lofi from One Piece, or the, pff, uh, uh, the guy from Attack on Titans. Um, um, people like that. They might have been voting for other characters. And plus, a lot of us American characters, a lot of Americans and Westerns, like Europeans, we were playing around a lot in the ballot with characters like John Cena. Shrek's Shrek and stuff like that man so that messed us up completely but Bayonetta was ranked on all the top five against the board basically in order to get the whole smash ballot uh, um, smash ballot win the, and Europe boosted her by her getting number one in Europe her being top five here in America and some um, basically top five in Japan they gave her enough to win the ballot as a whole See, Bayonetta can still get second place and um, win. Win. Like, think of it like Mario Kart. What happens when you lose Mario Kart? It's not about how many, um, it's not about if you get first place all through the matches. It's about how many points you accumulate in Grand Prix, which gives you your score. If you have the highest score and you're number one, then you win. Then you get the gold, um, the gold trophy. So that's how Bayonetta basically won Smash. And I cannot agree any further. Um, but my, while I, like again, I said I was slapped in the face with the whole Knuckles costume. I was going for uh, Knuckles and Simon Belmont. Um, but <laughs> I take the costume for now. Maybe next time, nipples. <laughs> but um, Bayonetta, man, I'm super shocked that she won. Because people kept saying, oh wow, Bayonetta too sexy, she too adult-wise, and plus she was advertised in Playboy. It's, <laughs> I cannot explain it, but good job, congratulations to Platinum Games and Bayonetta for making the Smash. Good job on everybody who was voting seriously, y'all got your character, y'all want it, and this is what happens when you actually take the ballot seriously. You get the character that you wanted, and Bayonetta, the character, and Bayonetta the, um, voters took the ballot seriously. They didn't um, go over there trying to make memes at the whole thing, and you know, they got what they wanted, and I cannot agree further. And I'm looking forward to playing with Bayonetta in February, if she makes the February, February deadline, like Horn. So that's basically all I have to say on this topic. Like I said, I'm happy that um, Corrin's in. It's more characters, more than Mario. And plus, he's a unique Fire Emblem character. He brings something new that the others really did not bring to new, um, except Robin. And like I said, Bayonetta, you know, was ranked overall. And her rankings was high enough to get her number one worldwide. And that's good. And this is what happens when you take the kill on Smash Ballot seriously. You get what you want. And Bayonetta fans really did. And they took it seriously and they got Bayonetta. So, congratulate to y'all. Y'all did great like, on the Smash Ballot. Yeah, like I said, we were playing around, messing around while putting people like Shrek and John Cena and Corey in the ballot. We basically lost. <laughs> but I'm not complaining. I'm happy with these new characters. And um, if they have to be the final ones, that's great. Like, I'm happy with what we got, alright? So, for my closing thesis out today, man, I want to go ahead and say... This has been a fun and major ride on Sakurai's crazy wild ride for Smash Brothers, and I'm just happy to be a part of it, man. It's just a big honor to be a part of such a game, man. And all this content that we get in, in for a final show out for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, it's <laughs> big, man. I cannot explain how I feel, but I'm glad that Sakurai is finally coming to a rest in on this crazy wild ride he's been putting us through, and I hope that. Um, whatever he does next, he'll enjoy it, man. And, um, and I have a video coming on what he should work on next. But let's just say that for later on. Right now, let's just get this, um, 
let's just go ahead and enjoy what he has created for us. I thank all my um I thank all the um my Smash fans out there who's been supporting Smash Bros for Wii U and 3DS respectively. We have come a long way since the days on the N64. And the character selection has gotten wider. We allowed in more characters than ever. There are more music, more um, places and locations to fight. Right, more possible modes that came out of this whole game. And to all the Smash fans, Sakurai already said it, but thank you. But to from the Smash fans, Sakurai, we thank you for delivering this awesome download content. No dis, uh, no dis, um, no disappointment here. I'm in love with Smash Bros. And five years, five years, basically two years after the NX and come out and premiere after two years after 2007. We'll be looking forward to another Smash game or so if he decides to do one. So, uh, have a good night. Good job, gamers. And peace.